somehow derive the local tile coordinate from the uh, destination coordinate. And why I think that's going to be easiest is because we have um, these whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, and 3, right? Uh, 1, 1, 2, comma, sorry, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. We have these nice whole numbers we can work with. But here we just have 0, 0. That's all the data we have. Um, so if we work with this and we need to subdivide things and use division, um, we, we're starting out with more data. So, I, so I, I have this hunch that if we um, have, if we try to derive the local coordinates starting with the destination, it, we're less likely to get um, uh, weird artifacts from floating point errors. Um, but that's kind of just a hunch. Um, uh, with that, let's look at the source code for a second and check out the section with the formula. So I know it's down here somewhere. OK, so right here, I'd like to kind of use the same variables if I can. Um, so you can see SX. So OK, yeah, so we have these guys. Um, OK, and then we have the destination X, destination Y. And we know that destination x and destination y is just looping through um, each uh, x, y tile coordinate of the destination viewport. So I'd like to use the same variable names, um, just so it's easier to transcribe and put in here after we're done kind of solving the problem. Um, uh, and we could also. Um, could also write it like this, um, right? We could actually take the whole thing. Uh, do we want to actually uh, make these variables as well? Um, I guess we kind of should. Um, so let's just take the source and destination. Let's take that. And it's slightly different um, because it says rec source here and rec destination. Oh, but we have our little comments right here that let us know uh, which one was which. Um, so I'm just going to make a note um, because we are about to um, edit that. So I'm just going to make a note of it's that um, this is this variable over here can either be this or that. Um, and then we'll change these back to the uh, initial viewport values. And why I'm doing that is because I want to um, I want to isolate the problem and I want to remove some abstractions. And since we've hard coded, um, viewports 1 and viewport 0, and they have very specific meanings in our code, where um, viewport 0 is always the destination, and viewport 1 is always the off-screen. Because we've hard-coded that, um, it makes it easier to solve problems like this, because we've by hard-coding it, we remove abstractions, um, if, if that makes sense. Um, because calling it source, and dust is a little bit more abstract than calling it viewport one and viewport zero and having very strict meanings for what that means. I, well, maybe, maybe that's just a, an opinion. Um, okay, anyways. So now we have those variables we can work with, we should, or did I screw something up? Um, C, what are these C values? Uh, that was the entire canvas, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, and then what, we were going over the entire canvas, and we were seeing if um, if the coordinate was inside of the bounds of the destination viewport. And we don't really want to do that for this, because then we have to have this little condition where not all the values are valid. Um, so we can change that around again. So we're going to change this loop here. 
And where we see the C's, we're going to change those back to the D's. They were way back when we originally coded this. So now that should be correct. Okay, so this is, you know, looping through, looping through every pixel of destination uh, viewport rectangle or something like that. So uh, we probably need a, we probably need something to, if we're going to think about something, we need a word for it. Um, without words to think about concepts, um, you can't think about it. Like if you don't have a word for something, you can't think about it. That's why humans are so smart, because we have language. Um, without, without attaching a word to something, um, it's like um, words are almost like containers for ideas. It's like if you want to pick up that idea, you have to like put it in a word. So if you want to pick up that idea and start working with it, it needs to have a word. And we are missing some words here, uh, specifically the uh, local coordinates. Right? We're trying to figure out the local coordinates uh, within this tile. And you know, I don't. I have not established any words for that. Right? I have. Um, you know, words that are describing our source coordinates of the source rectangle, and I have words describing the destination, but I don't have any words to describe the local tile coordinates. And we should, uh, we should do that. And so the local tile coordinates are actually going to be mapped onto here, right? Because this is just one tile. And it's one tile, but it's also one pixel, right? So there's no actual integer coordinates inside here. It's actually when it gets mapped onto here, where it has these local coordinates that directly map one to one onto this viewport. Okay. With that said, let's establish uh, something um, uh, local tile coordinates. Uh, local coordinate of current uh, tile. So local coordinates of current tile, so when we put this into our main code, um, these values will be local coordinates of the current tile, um, but which tile they apply to is not going to be in these variables. It's just going to be local tile coordinates of whatever tile um, that pixel happens to be owned by, if that makes sense. Um, so, I guess we have we have S, we have D, we have C, for like we got the right. We have these variables that start with S for source. We got these variables that start for D, D for desk. We we have C for canvas back in the code. So we could totally use um, L for local, um, and then T for tile, right? Because we probably want to figure out what the current tile is as well. Um, but first, I want to figure out those local coordinates. So uh, let's make some new um, variables. So I know I want, um, uh, it's literally just going to be local x uh, equals, and we'll just go 0 minus 33, because we don't, we don't know what this is yet. So ly. Since I don't know what it is, I'm just giving it like just a negative value, right? So sometimes I'll initialize things to bogus values that are going to cause problems um, because um, I believe that's called a trap value. Um, because we could also just, you know, um, like if it, in some languages, right, if you don't um, initialize a variable, it just gets zero initialized. But zeros are going to cause less trouble in the code than, you know, negatives. And so I just want to um, purposely sabotage these variables until I've actually put a meaningful value in it, right? So I'm just trying to make it easier to find mistakes in my code by setting uninitialized values to problematic values. If that makes sense. Um, uh, it, so it would be like um, uh, but yeah I think that concept is called a, a trap value 
but I could be but I could be wrong. Um, and trap value may have multiple meanings um, depending on um, depending on the language. Um, so don't don't take my word on that. I usually refer to something like this as setting trap values because the idea is um, I'm trying to like uh, trap the code by setting a trap that literally like makes the code like go poof, explode on me if I accidentally use these values that have I guess you could say that there's traps set in them so that if I accidentally try to use these values without having set anything meaningful in them I'm going to see an obvious problem and something should obviously go wrong okay so uh, uh, so I'm just make a local X, and this is local Y. Okay, so not only do we need that, but we do need some type of coordinate for the uh, current tile coordinate. So we're just gonna say um, uh, current um, current uh, tile in focus slash tile. Um, uh, uh, tile owned by a pixel. Um, um, destinations, destination pixels tile value. Um, so basically, as we're scanning over the canvas viewport pixel by pixel I want to know uh, what tile value that pixel is associated with um, so I just so this is TX and bar TY right so this is gonna be um, for this current example uh, this should always be zero and zero because we're just saying that the um, that we're gonna be zoomed into this one tile so that this one tile fits the entire destination viewport. So every single pixel of this should be owned by or associated with um, tile zero comma zero on our tile map. So we'll set some uh, some different trap values here. We'll just uh, set a six six six, and then we'll make a little note here that this is the tile x and the tile y. Okay, so we got our locals, and we got our tile x's and our tile y. So now that we've established um, words for the concepts we're thinking about, we can we have now enabled ourselves a way to think about them. Um, now I said I wanted to derive the uh, local coordinates. Uh, so in here, I want to know. Um, the LX equals, you know, what the hell does that equal? And then the LY, what the hell is that, right? Well, and I know that I'm going to um, somehow go uh, using DX, so some type of function using DX and DY is going to somehow output um, the coordinates LX and LY. This is kind of what I'm solving here. Some type of function, which could be a whole set of equations, using DX and DY is going to output local X and local Y of the tile. So how are we going to solve that? Um, as I am, as I, I'm slowly whittling away at this, but you know, I like I said, I, I really have no clue what I'm doing right now. So I'm kind of like solving this uh, with you guys. I'm sure there are some people who are watching, or who have already stopped watching, who are like, "Come on, this is easy. What the hell are you doing?" But this is the first time for me, so it's gonna take me a little bit to think about it. Um. So dx, dy, so we're like in these coordinates. And it's obvious from this problem set that the answer is always 0, 0. But we need some reason for why that is. Um, 
for this problem set. Um, so my first thought is we look at this viewport and we figure out how many tiles on the X and Y there are um, in this viewport. And then we subdivide the destination viewport into equal sections. Um, so if there's, so right now we're just dividing this viewport into one section. So you're always, you're only in one section and that's why it only always maps to this tile. But let's say this was, uh, instead of focusing on one tile, it was like four, four tiles, right? So then you would subdivide this into four sections. So you would know that this is the first section of the subdivision. So all these are tiles zero comma zero. And this is the uh, second section um, on both the X and the Y. And right, because we're dividing, we're divide, we're splitting it right here and here like that. If, uh, if there's four tiles, um, right? Because like if it's, um, well, let's, uh, let me, let me draw that for a second. So I'm saying that if, uh, if our VP1 was looking at, uh, if the lens was big enough to be looking at something like this, where there's four tiles like that, then what we're going to do is we look at those dimensions and we'd be like, oh, it covers four tiles and four tiles are going to be mapped onto the destination viewport somewhere. So we know that um, we need to subdivide this destination viewport right down the middle, right? Like that. And now that we know that it's subdivided like that, we know that this chunk of tiles uh, maps to here, and then this next chunk of tiles maps to here. And all we have to do is say, okay, well, there's, um, we just have to split it in half on the X and split it in half on the Y, right? We split it in half on the X, oh, sorry, on the X, and then we split it in half on the Y. Um, so kind of just, we're just trying to, um, this is kind of like, um, uh, if you're familiar with grid-based collision, uh, we're basically kind of like uh, abstracting grid-based collision logic and uh, using it to figure out what tile um, a pixel is in. Okay, so with that, uh, let's just work that out. So we know that the number of sections um, Let me think. Um, local coordinates. Okay, so we'll have over here. We're gonna make another some more variables. So nx and var ny. Okay, number of sections x, number of sections y. Um, or you could think of this as number of tiles x, number of tiles y. Um, but we're already using tx, ty for the um, local, um, for the, um, oh, for the current tile in focus. Um, and then the local coordinates of the current tile. Um, so it looks from what I just said, tripping over my tongue, that, um, that I'm going to have to be careful not to mix up these coordinates with these coordinates. Um, um, there's definitely some potential if I'm not careful that I could mix up these variables. Uh, there, actually, when you're making terse variables, um, that's one of the downsides um, is that um, being concise also means that there, um, that sometimes you you do risk mixing up um, what is what. 
Um, but let's 